All right, thanks for watching. So, my whole life in middle school and high school, I asked my teachers, why does one over zero does not exist? And they always looked at me with shock. And they were like, oh my God, you asked the question which shall not be asked. Well, in honor of, of my childhood, let me now show you why one over zero doesn't exist. And it's actually really cool. Basically, if one over zero existed, then everything would be zero. Okay, but let me show you why. So here are a couple of facts about zero and one. Well, you may all know zero and one as counting zero, one, two, three, four, five, etc., etc. But what makes zero and one so interesting is that they have some very nice algebraic properties. Namely, zero is what's called the unit for addition, and one it's called the unit for multiplication. So here are a couple of facts. First of all, zero algebraically is actually defined to be the number such that zero plus x equals to x plus zero equals to x for all x. Okay, so again, algebraically adding by zero doesn't do anything and this is actually the definition of zero in this case. And what about one? One is the same thing but with multiplication. One is the number such that multiplying by one doesn't do anything. So one times x equals to x times one equals to x for all x. And lastly, since we'll be talking about one over zero, what does one over x mean? It means that it's the number such that if you multiply it by x, so x times 1 over x equals to 1 over x times x equals to 1 for all x. So if 1 over x exists, then it has a property that if you multiply it by x, it equals to 1. And that is the definition of the inverse. So like 1 over 2, it's not really the number 1 divided by the number 2. It's the number such that if you multiply it by 2, you get 1. So those are the three definitions we need. Again, that's the definition of 0, the definition of 1, and the definition of 1 over x. And lastly, we'll just need one fact which seems obvious by what you've learned in high school, etc., etc., but it's actually, it's not that trivial, and in the end I will prove this. Namely, if you multiply zero by x, you get zero, and that's for all x. And again, this does not follow from the definition of zero. This is the definition of zero. And it's sort of interesting because zero has an additive definition, but here we're talking by mul about multiplying. And again, I will prove this in the end. Okay, with those four facts, we can actually prove that one over zero doesn't exist. So suppose one over zero exists. Well, then by this fact, right, we would have 0 times 1 over 0. Because you multiply 0 by x by fact 4, this would be equal to 0. On the other hand, now let's take the fact that you have 1 over something. But because you're doing 0, times 1 over 0, times 1 over 0, this property 3 says that the zeros cancel out. So by fact 3, you get 1. 
and therefore, 0 equals to 1. Equals to 1. And well, which is already very shocking, but even more shocking is, what happens if 0 equals to 1? Then, you can multiply zero, any x, this identity by any x, okay, for all x, But then, remember, 0 times x equals to 0. And 1 times x, by property 2, would be equal to x. So that's property 2 and 4. And therefore, if you assume that 1 equals to 0, we get that any x that you have is automatically equal to 0. In other words, let me summarize, if you actually assume that 1 over 0 exists, then everything in the world would be equal to 0. And that's a contradiction, because the beauty of math is, it's not really equalities. The beauty of math is in the inequalities. By this I mean that what's nice about math is that everything is different. Namely, 1 is not equal to 0, 2 is not equal to 1, etc., etc. So math literally differentiates between elements. And it says, well, which elements are equal to each other and which are not equal to each other. If you find that, you know, 1 over 0 exists, then everything in the world would be equal to 0 and you wouldn't be able to distinguish between elements. So here's your proof, and now, again, if you want to stick around, let me prove this fourth fact. So, so now let me prove of 0x equals to 0. Again, it's not obvious because zero is the additive identity, but here I'm saying that multiplying by this additive identity gives you zero. So here's a cool thing. Notice, zero times x, that's equal to the following. It's zero plus zero times x, and that's because if you add nothing to zero, that equals to zero. And that also follows from the additive identity of zero. Because remember, zero plus anything is zero. Uh, sorry, zero plus anything is that thing, and therefore zero plus zero is that zero. And now, what we can do, we're allowed to foil it out, that's one of the properties of uh, what's called a ring. So if you multiply and you add, you can foil it out. So you get that 0x equals to 0x plus 0x. And now the nice thing is, and this is also an algebraic thing, in, in those rings we can also subtract, namely, we can add minus 0x to this. If you'd like, we can add minus 0x okay, equals to 0x plus 0x minus 0x. And just like 1 over x, which gives you, you know, 1 when you multiply it by x, in general, if you add minus y to y, you get 0. And that is the definition of minus something. So literally, you can cancel this out. 0 equals to 0x zero plus 0x zero minus 0x. Zero That's what's called associativity. So 0x zero plus 0. And remember, adding 0 to anything gives you that thing. So you get 0x.
And therefore, 0x equals to 0, and that's what we wanted to show. So you see, although that you might think this is obvious, it's not quite obvious. It follows from this cool you know, trick, foiling out and adding the additive inverse. All right, so if you like that, hopefully now your childhood self is relieved, you know, we finally answered the question of one over zero. And if you like that, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.